Well, hello everyone, Dylan here. Happy Throwback Thursday, and the rotation leads us to another Star Wars review, and this one's on The Malevolence from 2012, of course. So we have on the two manuals, have the Lego Star Wars logos and the white and blue and Darth Maul border from the time. You see a picture of the set in action, and the set number is 9515. First manual. Just halfway through the build. And second manual. On the back, how to win on the online survey. After the comic builder thing from the, that was on the website at the time. And after Lego Club. And then advertisement of all the mini figs of the wave of course and add for all the sets from the time and also that of which Jabba's Palace expect for next next throwback Thursday then a little comic strip involving all some of the mini figs of this set of course and all the features of the set and then all the pieces that come with the set of course and then the last steps. So now on to the mini things included. <clears throat> so first of which we would have a uh, ham. Okay. First of is just a generic regular uh, battle droid and also a battle droid and also a battle droid pilot or leader of which same as they've been for quite long or as always so but also still good for army building and then oh, whoops <clears throat> and next to which is uh, Anakin Skywalker Clone Wars variant who, which has come in quite a lot of sets since 2008. And then uh, Count Dooku, kind of the same as from Dooku Solar Sailor from 2009, but kind of the same features for that. And also, still wielding the chrome uh, curved lightsaber hold, which was on just for him when everything, everyone else still had the uh, regular silver to the kind of thing for that. And then next to which have Clone Wars style uh, Padme Amidala, which the face printing quite done for her, despite being in the Clone Wars style of that. But however, the, the torso printing looks quite good for how it is. And of course, have the and not and all neat like printing, of course. And however, the hair piece of which, which was kind of exclusive to her, but I think it might have been on some others as well. And of course, and also forgot to say that Count Dooku still using the Widow's Peak hair piece, which of it since then, and and of course did get the updated version for Episode Two, but like the next, the following year, of course. But yeah, but also Padme, which the appear this appearance similar to one that came in the recent Coruscant Guard gunship set, but in this earlier Clone War style for that. But yeah, and then have the later updated version of General Griefus, which, as you can see, quite about as much good and similar to the ones that came in the uh, General Grievous' Starfighter set in 2020, but also, and of course, this, which, same as that, came in the, actually in the version of that set, but put out in 2010, but, and of course, there's Guy I have here in this set, of course, but oh, and of course, still wielding the green and blue lightsabers, of course. And then flip to the back side of each of them. And King Count Dooku, not an only back torso printing, and, and also Pac Man's back torso printing, done quite well for that. And also, none of which was back head printings, of course. So, kind of interesting how these were all. How these two of which, which were mostly 
are kind of Cold War style and everything, but still carried on to here in 2012, which even though it started in 2008. And of course, this went on till 2014, obviously, but yeah. And that is about it with the figs. And now on to the Malevolence. Which, as you see, quite long and also a quite unique, cool one that we haven't seen any remakes of, right? And what's kind of interesting with this whole set is that did appear in Season 1 Clone Wars, which was 2008-9, but then this set was out in 2012, so I guess it was a little bit of a late throwback set, but however, still quite nice to have here. So like, from back to tip, I would quite in quite neat shaping to that, and also not much studded with its surfacing, but like, as for this upper part of which, see, which is mostly just uh, dark blue wedge pieces. Does that head out into a point there, and also have a bunch of clip kind of plates acting as greepling, of course, and have a long slope on there, of course. And also has a curved slope and a couple jagged slopes, just kind of randomly there, and then. Further, further down, which have one of those dome pieces, and there's a feature involving this, which I'll show later. You know, a lot of that going on, and then further down, which have uh, a couple more wedge uh, kind of plates, and also this random wheel piece as greepingly, and then for this this kind of back section, which is actually mostly for structure, but also, but luckily there's a bit of interior space for that, kind of different than what we've had with most uh, Star Destroyer and Venator type uh, ships then. And then the far back of which is, had this tail thin part, which, or otherwise the bridge part, which would be quite hard to do in mini fig scale, but this is a small representation of that, like we had with most of these other kind of sets for that. And then on to the far back, which, which have a lot of these uh, Technic uh, cylinder kind of pieces, a few of which with wheel pieces on them, and also with Transorn studs to represent the thrust of it. So that's quite an interesting build for, for something with a lot of engine parts, of course. And then above of which is just a couple of curved slopes just going inwards. And so now, to, now to access the interior part of it, just take this upper part of it and then lift it right up and it comes completely off for that. And as for this interior space, oh, which quite a good bit of interior space, and also forgot to mention, get a whole lot of these uh, tile pieces that are probably to represent lights and windows on it. And as for the interior space, which have this little control panel uh, chair in there, which is where you can sit a bow droid into, and also stand a bow droid, or General Grievous, in this one spot up here for that. Of like controlling it, and also a couple little dish pieces, most likely to represent holographic monitoring, of course. And also those dome pieces from earlier, is that you can like lift them up, and then also have this Technic wheel part on there, and kind of goes to these bits on there. So basically, you can like push on this and launches the spring or the flip fly or missiles out, and you just have to turn it counterclockwise to do that, or to make it work. So kind of an interesting, unique feature to this set. And good thing that's on both sides. Which if you're a symmetry person, well, this is which well workable for you. And then for the farther back part of the interior, which not much of anything, which goes to the Technic uh, bits inside there. And of course, quite nice that there are the dome pieces on top of it to represent so that so it doesn't so they don't fall out as easily. Which nice thinking for that. And also you can like, like 
patting it on and just that uh, like so. And then as for this uh, little technique bit, which is actually a handle part, which like most uh, sets of this time and also till today, you have this nice carrying handle for that, which is always nice to have and good for swooshability, of course. And which and leaving it alone on there is which doesn't seem to stand out quite well, but yeah. Then as for this back part, which you can flip right open in three different spots, and there's a little bit more going on. And which, unlike with the first few episodes of the Clone Wars, where this going on, where there's a hover train kind of part in it, and which you lift this up, and that's what this little red uh, build is supposed to represent, that little train kind of thing fit in it. Which goes upwards and over some curved slope on there. And it just goes straight up to there. And although, what would be nice if, if there was a couple of gold studs on there to represent when 3PO gets a hit onto it, of course. Yeah. You guys see this, which does have a little crate and a hammer piece in there. And to prevent it from jumbling around, just push this Technic bit down onto it and it's securely in place. And now onto the other side of it, which is uh, sort of the same, but just very little. Which, as you see, doesn't have same build, but just not without the crate and hammer bit to it. So at least there's so a bit of asymmetricality, but just but at least it's hidden in, on the inside, which is good to see there. Now on to the final verdict. So overall, I think that okay. So overall, I think this is which a quite good set, or just really cool set for that. Like get plenty of interior space of it in both front and back sections. Even though in some sets you get it in just the upper set, in the front section for that, so this is kind of an improvement over those, over other Star Destroyer sets and such, and the mini figs which may be a little bit repetitive, but at least got one good exclusive fig, being of Padme, even though it didn't stay exclusive for long, but yeah, so this is which kind of a, quite a good set for the time, but yeah. Like for the $160-$70 that it was, well, regardless of inflation, still quite fair for how it is. So, and also, and also as for the minifig selection, would have been nice if C-3PO could have been on in this selection as well. well. Since he of course did appear to that in some of the earlier episodes of the Clone Wars that this was featured in. But yeah. And also... And also the uh, playability of which, like the flip flyer missiles and the train kind of bit inside, hover train inside. Well, quite nice to see there, and also good interior space in the front part. So it's almost like the Venator and Imperial Light Cruiser as well. And also kind of an interesting one that we haven't seen in any remakes of yet. Like if this were remade now, I would expect instead of foot fire missiles, probably include uh, probably just stud shooters, either stud shooters and or uh, sprinkler launchers, of course. <coughs> and also would be nice if a mini fig of Animal Trench could have been here as well, who we haven't seen in any appearance an actual appearance in mini fig form ever. Well, maybe someday, event, maybe at some point eventually we'll get that, but yeah. And so now, if any of you still have this set from back in the day, well, I hope you had some good memories of it. 
And for those of you who haven't and are still looking to get this set, I'd say definitely get it. eBay, Bricklink, Mercari, whatever. And that's about it with this video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching.